So what I want to know, and all the fans want to know that we got you here, how did you meet um, a Marshall? Yeah, the white, the white boy? The white boy. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, how did we meet the white boy? <laughs> I met Eminem um, at the hip hop shop. Okay. In Detroit, yep. yeah. Yeah, okay. Detroit hip hop shop. Uh, it was just, it was just, uh, I remember mean, y'all remember this clothing designer named Malone. Uh, Maurice Malone. Mar Maurice yeah, Malone. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He had a little shop back then, and uh, he used to throw battles on uh, Saturdays. Right. So proof was the proof was the host. Um, it seems like it seems like I met him, and my memory is terrible. Like I'm a I'm an alcoholic, so my memory is fucking terrible. But I um, I met him. I remember meeting him on that day because my son was born that same night. So that's why I never forget that day. But um. And uh, he just kept telling me, oh, this is white boy named Marshall. He's a champion. He was a king. He was like a legend. Like, nobody had never seen him before. And he would just come just to battles. And the battles were like every six months. Right. And he would have his hat down low, his hoodie on, stay in the back. And then, like, he was he was a champion. So, you know, he heard me. He liked me. So we, you know, ended up doing some songs. And he just kind of took me in like his little brother. Right. Yeah. And that's how y'all met. Yeah. I met him, we recorded the song, and it seems like shit, right after that, Paul was calling me like, your boy, Dre is looking at your boy, he's about to sign him. You know, so um, I never was with him in none of the battles that he did abroad. Like when he went and battled um, Juice and all of those people, like the Scribble Jam and all of that, I wasn't with him for none of that. Like I started, I became his hype man for his shows, like after he was already signed with Dre. Meeting him, man, what was that like for you? That was crazy. Yeah. It was like uh he was like a cartoon. I can't explain it. <laughs> like like seeing that face in real life was wild. Yeah. yeah. What you say? Nothing. <laughs> I was a fucking <laughs> retard when I met Eminem. I was I like shook his hand. I was like <laughs> Like I could like I couldn't stop like nodding and smiling. Yeah. And he was like he he like fucking gave me some compliments or whatever and like i couldn't deal with it like <laughs> you know because he at first he was like yo like i think you shit's tight whatever and i was that's like whatever because you know niggas say that and then uh -huh. he was like nah for real like hey you could really wrap your ass off and i was like nah like <laughs> how eminem came to you and then when you guys did meet he actually was was singing your lyrics to you so what was that whole experience like <laughs> um well Paul gave him Trump music, um, and uh, he was sitting with the tape. This is the story I hear. Uh, he goes down to work with Jim Johnson in Miami, and Jim Johnson's like my big brother. He plays, he plays and pop the trunk, my video. You know, on the way back to Detroit, and listen to Trump music. I guess it sparked interest to have a meeting. Eminem comes in in this bright yellow fucking sweatsuit, hoodie, pants, everything. It's bright fucking yellow, you know, and I'm like, wow. I'm like, man, listen, I think this shit is fucking incredible and I would love to work with you. I was like, man, listen, I put this sample together. Tell me if you like it. So uh, we had recently signed with uh, uh, Jimmy Iovine mm -hmm. and Luke Wood to Interscope, Ghetto Vision Interscope. And uh, we went out for a meeting to Detroit. And I, I, th I really thought it was just a meet and greet. You know, and we sit and just chop it up. Really, he he was just asking about my story, so he listened a lot, and he quoted, yeah, he quoted one of the lyrics, uh, one of the verses off of Pop the Trunk, which was crazy That's to me. That's crazy. That, that he, I hit one of my joints, man. Yeah, and I hit the drum machine, and maybe two or three seconds went by, and he just went, hi, my name is, my name is, like, yo, stop, shit's hot. That's what happened our first day and the first few minutes of us being in the studio. It's just one of those things when you just know something special is happening. Who calls you and tells you that Eminem has taken an interest? Uh, It was Tim. It was my A&R Interscope. He called me, and I honestly, I was like, that's cool and all. You feel me? Like, I'd be more so having to see stuff happen before I just listen to stuff, and I was like, that's cool. But then he flew me out, I think, like, maybe the next day or two days later, and I met him. Yeah, it was lit after that. To Detroit? Uh, to Detroit, yeah, yeah, yeah. To and you Detroit. went to the crib? No, we went to... The studio? What was it? Yeah, some big-ass studio. It was like a big-ass mansion, honestly. Took the time to listen, but what you'll find out about uh, him is that, like, he's a real fan of music. Like, he mm -hmm. knows a lot about what's going on. 
Like, you would be surprised how many artists he, he knows about, listens to, his, you know, he studies the game. See, that's so nice to hear, you know, with someone with such, such success, he's still about the music as a music fan. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, he pays attention. Yeah. Was there an arcade? It was an arcade. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, he got that damn arcade. And, and, and so, well, first of all, how big an Eminem fan were you to start out with? Uh, I love Eminem. Jay Z, my favorite rapper all the time. I'm gonna just throw it out there. But I, mean, I, I always love Eminem growing up. Of course, uh, every hood nigga love Eight Mile for some reason. I don't know why, but yeah, I just always love Eminem. I, mean, I think I think it's reasonable. I just rewatched it over the holidays. It was on a lot. I really think it's reasonable. I really think it's reasonable to argue that Eight Mile is the greatest rap movie of all time. So you you recently performed with Eminem in Hawaii to a huge. Yeah. How many people were in the stadium? Audience? I don't know. It was a lot. It was a stadium. It was a lot. It was like thirty to fifty thousand. Yeah, people. insane amounts. Yeah. Wow. Um, First of all, tell me, uh, what does meeting Eminem mean to you? I mean, was that something so that you much. listened to a lot? I haven't been, like, there's, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Like, he's one, he's the first rap verse I ever memorized on Forgot About Dre. Mm. And, you know, I was so young. I remember my sister took uh, two sides of a tape. This is, I'm <laughs> dating myself right now. But, the, you know, these old uh, cassette tapes, and she had it on each side of it uh, that she had done for me. And, dude, I mean... It's Eminem, bro. You know what I mean? It's like the Legend. goat. Yeah. yeah so the goat, really. I was excited that he first and foremost had invited me to to come do the show. I How did that, that invite really... come through? It's a long story. Hmm. It's a long story. It's like we got time. Yeah. But I, I know. understand if you don't want to say it. I can't explain. <laughs> but it was very cool. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. But I get this invite from him. That's amazing. Uh yeah. That's and... recognition from really the highest place. Right? Insane. So we're in Hawaii and I'm there and I'm just like really stoked. And I know I'm gonna meet him. <laughs> and I, but the whole time I was like, cool, like whatever, like it's all good, like yeah, this is cool. And even in the stadium, like I wasn't really nervous about the fact that I'm in a stadium. I was just mm -hmm. excited. It was my first time performing in Hawaii. I've always wanted to perform, mm -hmm. never had. So I was just excited. And then I didn't realize the magnitude of shit <laughs> until, you know, his security guards tell my security guards to tell me that it's time. <laughs> and so it's like a seven minute trek through the stadium. Like, I'm, I get in like a car and a, I go through all the, the gnarliest shit. And we get we walk there and I'm there with uh, uh, Paul Rosenberg, who's uh, over at Def Jam. He's the president of Def Jam and he's mm. he's, he's uh, his, his manager. So I don't know if you remember those old uh, the, the, the first songs he would do. And he would like Paul would call and be like, you can't say this crazy ass shit, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And that was him. <laughs> so we're there and he walks me backstage and. Who did I see first? I'm trying to remember. I think Alchemist came out. So Alchemist is an incredible producer. He's also a super ill spitter, um, and he's Eminem's DJ. Hmm. And he's just like, I mean, he's worked with everybody. He's been around everybody, Primo and, and uh, Dilla. and I mean, just huge staple in hip-hop for me hmm. and for many others. And so he was super cool as shit. Hmm. And then I saw Royce the 5'9", and Royce... Me and him are homies. So seeing him made me a lot more comfortable, mm -hmm. which was really awesome. And then um, and then Mr. Porter was there, and he was super cool. I didn't know. I was like, oh, I, don't, I never met this guy. And he was just like so just cool and open and nice. And then Eminem came out. <laughs> and Eminem comes out in a fucking ho hoodie. Mm -hmm. And he's like, <laughs> rapkin in a napkin. No, I'm just kidding. Rapkin. <laughs> <laughs> rapkin. <laughs> just candy. Boxes. No, he's, yeah, he's talking normally. Anyway, so he walks out. Super fucking cool, man. Just like so. He's like, hey, what's up? I'm nervous. And I'm like, hey, I'm fucking nervous. Like, I just let him know. I'm like, yo, you guys. If I'm being weird, this is a big deal for me. And I was like, look, I get it. And I wasn't trying to sound. Like, I didn't like say this because I didn't want to sound like an asshole but it's like I know what it's like when people are nervous to meet me mm -hmm. yeah. you know and they're like shaking yeah, and like yeah. crying and shit and, but I, I get it and I'm always cool about mm -hmm. it but I didn't want to come off that way but I also didn't want to come off disingenuine like what's up yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's it hey going? man nice to meet you yeah, yeah what's up Marshall yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean I was like I was genuine I was just like dude <laughs> If I seem a little weird or a little red in the face, it's because I'm gonna be honest. Like I'm so happy to be here with you. Well, I'll say I saw you kind of gushing on on, on Twitter. Twitter yeah. and I thought it was <laughs> yeah. sweet, and yeah. very sincere. Thanks. I yeah. could tell you were so excited. I, was <laughs> such a I, I think it's good. It's such a meaningful experience, and you were very expressive about that. I think that's very cool. Yeah, it had to be so mm -hmm. honest. But the cool thing, like I've met a lot of people, and. They've all, uh, so many of them have been insanely cool, and they invite you in, and it's like, hey, what's up? And you guys just kind of talk for a while, and then, you know, if they want, because I'm not big on pictures. Mm. 
Um, I, I don't want to invade anybody's space. I don't want somebody to think I'm there for a picture. Mm -hmm. But it typically tends to benefit both parties if you guys take a picture and post it on Instagram because everybody mm -hmm. gets excited that you're together. Mm -hmm. um, but they were like, we want a picture. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so mm -hmm. cool. And so, you know, we took a picture. But the biggest thing was just talking hip hop. Mm -hmm. We talked about freestyles versus written versus mm -hmm. like the era we're in and, and the time and the shit you could say and the shit you can't say. And he's like, I just say, it. Like, you know, <laughs> but it's just like all this stuff. It was it was a really um, special, special experience. And I, I, I won't really get into what we talked about because it's a it's a memory for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it was it was really special. But everybody it wasn't just M man. it was Mr. Porter and Royce and uh, Paul and, and, and Alchemist. They were all just so kind. And it. It, I mean, we were chill for like twenty minutes. That's awesome. Like I had to go to the stage mm -hmm. right after that, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was it was a, it was an incredible experience. I'll always cherish. And he's a really good dude, man. And he just loves rap. Mm -hmm. Right. He just loves rap. Yeah, you can tell. Damn. Yeah. That's awesome. Pretty sick. I'm glad you had that experience. Me too. It was a. It was a. Well, actually, you were supposed to come on the podcast last week. That's right. why I couldn't then, do it. It was yeah. the same yeah. day. Yeah. And you're like, hey, man, uh, uh, just so you know, I'm not gonna. I, was, I heard from Dan, from your manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, Eminem invited him to do a show in Hawaii. <laughs> And I was like, that motherfucker <laughs> to blow me up for Eminem. Yeah, no. Totally. no, I was like, oh, that's a legit reason. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs>